Hello everybody, welcome to Takuma Island Online. Can you believe we're almost done with June? I know, it's the last Sunday in June. Where did the that time go by? Time just flying right by. Yes. And today we have another cool story in our series on children of the Bible. That's right. This, this one we do have I was going to say, this little girl yeah. has a name. Her yes. name is Rhoda. Rhoda, yes. And Rhoda has a lot of faith. She does, yes. For a little child. In fact, um, I think she has more faith than the adults that were around I think here. so too. I think so too. And we'll find that out as our story and, goes on And I on think today. because of her faith, God allowed her to do something really cool. Right. right. Yeah. So we have our usual puppets and some oh, yes. songs. Yep. And, Object lessons. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and you know, I'm just thinking about a month from today, we'll be having our vacation That's Bible right. school. Yes. Because we have that at the end of July. So it's we the hope, last full week of July. We yeah. hope some of you guys that have been watching us online will be joining us for Vacation yes. Bible School this year. Right. It's going to be a very cool Vacation Bible School. But anyway, I digress at this point. So we should continue on with our program for today. Yes. So we'll catch you back at the end. See you at the end.
guess everything is ready. Come and get it, you two. What's for supper? Wait, I can tell by sniffing. Mmm, <laughs> veal Oscar? No, Oscar Mayer. We're having hot dogs. Hooray, my favorite. Well, thank you for the compliments. Larry, would you like to thank God for the food? Sure, Dad. Lord, thank you for this food. Amen. Can I have a hot dog, please? Larry. Yes, Dad? Did you mean what you just said? Sure. I really want a hot dog. I think your father was speaking about your prayer. Well, I guess so. Why? It sounded to Mother and I like you were just mouthing the words to get the prayer over with. Jesus tells us in Matthew not to use vain repetition when we pray. Do you know what that means, Larry? Oh boy, I sure don't, Mom. It means that when we pray, we shouldn't just repeat words without meaning what we're saying. Every time I ask you to pray at supper, you say the same thing. It doesn't sound like you're thinking about what you're saying. Oh, I guess I really haven't been. Who are you talking to when you pray, Larry? Well, to God. Right. And God is a real person, even though we can't see Him. So, when we pray, we're talking to the Lord, just like we're talking to each other right now. I think I understand. When I pray, I'm talking to God. So I should think about what I'm saying. And actually mean it. Dad, would it be okay if I thank God again for the food? Sure, Larry. Your father and I would be pleased if you did. Heavenly Father, thank you that I can talk to you and know that you're a real person who really hears me. Thank you, too, for this food. Amen. Very good, Larry. Now, how about a hot dog? Yes, please. Boy, am I hungry. Dear, where are the hot dogs? Why, they're right. Oh, I must have left them in the kitchen. I'll go get them while you two start on the potato salad. What potato salad? Oh, well, I'll get that, too. You can start with the macaroni and cheese. Oh, as soon as I bring that in, too. Oh, and also the lemonade. Come on, son. Let's go help your mother. Okay. Hi, boys and girls. Miss Lisa here. Today's story continues our series of children in the Bible. So we're going to talk about another child that, that is mentioned in the Bible. And today's story comes from the book of Acts, chapter 12. And I have to give you a little bit of background before we get into today's story. This story takes place um, as the disciples were building the early church. It was after Jesus was crucified, after he died on the cross, after he rose again from the dead after the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were spreading out around the country and getting more and more believers to believe, more and more people to believe on Jesus. But the Roman leaders and the most, not just the Roman leaders, but the Jewish leaders, they were still very, very upset. They didn't like this whole Jesus talk. And they thought after they killed Jesus, it was all going to go away and it can go back to like, the way that it was when they were in power and when all the people were, you know, like doing what they wanted to, to do and not following Jesus. And um, th th this is the time that we were in. And it was still very difficult for the disciples. Um, you know, the, the Jewish leaders were still trying to stop them from spreading uh, all of Jesus's teaching and fr stop them from getting more people to believe on Jesus because they wanted things to stay the way that they had it in the, in the church for ever. So um, th that that's where we're at. So at this time, King Herod had had James, one of the disciples, arrested. And then when he was arrested, King Herod had him killed. So this made the Jewish leaders happy. They were like, yay, one less disciple. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of kind of sad. But they were like, hey, if King Herod will help us and like kill these uh, disciples, you know, we'll have less to worry about. So when King Herod saw that the Jewish leaders were happy that he had James killed, he had Peter arrested also. Now, if you remember, Peter is like one of the, the main disciples like right now who's like, 
the the head teacher and he's he's out there and he's getting more and more people to believe on Jesus and he's spreading the good news of the gospel you know like that Jesus uh was the messiah and the savior and he he's building the early church so he's he's a pretty influential uh, guy at this point so like it's it's a big deal that Peter got arrested and it, like the Jewish leaders are really thinking that once Peter is arrested um, you know, like this whole Jesus thing is going to stop finally. So um, Herod had him arrested and he wasn't just put in jail. He was chained to two other guards. So like he couldn't get away. If he slipped like one guard, he had a second guard. And he was put in the innermost part of the jail. And there was the two guards that were chained to him. And then there was like a gate or a blockage and then there were two other guards and then like the other gate to for for the prison so he was very well guarded and um for some reason he was like kind of stripped down and humiliated so like uh he wasn't allowed to have all of his clothes on and and he was there with with the guards and he was praying that everything would be okay be, because they had just killed James and he was in jail like over the weekend, over the holiday weekend uh, for Passover. And uh, the plans were to kill Peter after public trial, after Passover, like after the weekend. So Peter was pretty sure that he was going to be killed. and But he was okay to do that if that meant more people would follow Jesus. And so he was in jail, chained to two guards, guarded by a minimum of four guards. And at the same time, there were all of the other disciples, all of the Jesus followers at a house just inside town, you know, away from the prison a little bit, praying for God to do something miraculous, to free Peter to uh, get him out of jail, to spare his life so he can continue telling people about Jesus. So one night, you know, in the middle of the weekend, Peter's in jail. It's late at night. Uh, he's chained to the two guards. He really can't go anywhere because he's got those two guards. He's got other guards like just outside the gate. And all of a sudden, an angel appears in the prison. And he takes a little stick and he pokes Peter in the side, like hits him in the side of his, his stomach, his, his side. And he says, Peter, get up and get dressed. And Peter was like, kind of like, okay, but I'm chained to these two guards. So then all of a sudden the chains just fall away and the guards are just like still sitting there, like sleeping. And because Peter had been sleeping, it was the middle of the night. And so Peter gets up and he gets dressed really quick and he puts his sandals on and the guard says like, come with me. And they walk right out of the gate and they walk right by the second set of guards and he's out of prison. And Peter was thinking that he was dreaming that all this was happening, that like it was this great dream that he could just walk out of prison. And when he got outside prison, they were at the city gate and the city gate just opened automatically all by itself. And they walked through the gate and then all of a sudden the angel disappeared. So Peter is standing there and he's like, oh my, this really happened. I wasn't dreaming. I am now outside the city. And, or like back in the city outside of prison. And he knew that all of the people were at that house praying for him. So he went directly to that house. And now the people were up all night. They were tired, but they were really earnestly praying for Peter, praying that God would release him from prison, praying that something miraculous would happen, praying that Herod would change his mind and not kill him, you know, like, the next day so then they heard a knock on the door um so a little girl named Rhoda went to go answer the door 
And when she answered the door and she saw that it was Peter, she was so excited that Peter was there that she forgot to let him in. She was like, yay, Peter's out of jail, yay. And she slammed the door shut and went running back into the house to tell everybody that Peter was out of jail. So she goes back in the house and everybody's praying and she's like, hey, everybody, everybody, Peter's at the door. Peter's here. Peter's out of jail. And they were like, oh, you must really be tired. You must be hearing things. You must be seeing things. You must have had a dream, you know, go back to sleep or, you know, like go, go pray, you know, like just, you know, they didn't believe that Peter was at the door. So she's like, no, seriously, guys, everybody, Peter is at the door. Peter is here. You got to come see Peter's at the door. And they, they kind of pushed her off again. But now, meanwhile, Peter's still at the door and he's knocking at the door and he's banging on the door. And he's like, guys, I'm here. Let me in. So then they're like, you know, well, you must have seen his angel. He must have already be dead. And, you know, God sent his angel to comfort you. So you, you, you must be hallucinating. You must be dreaming. He's not really there. But Peter was, you know, and Rhoda was like, no, he's there. I'm telling you, he's at the door. You got to come see him. You got to come see him. And Peter's still knocking on the door. So finally, somebody else goes with the little girl, Rhoda, and opens the door and sees that Peter is still standing there. And they all start to yell, yay, Peter's out of jail. But Peter holds up his hand and he's like, wait, shh, stop. He goes, I'm still wanted. King Herod is going to be mad when he finds out that I'm not in jail. So I needed you to know that I'm no longer in jail and that your prayers worked and God is doing some great things. And you need to go and continue uh, telling everybody about Jesus. But I need to leave for now. I need to go to another place. I need to go tell about Jesus some other place. So he's like, keep it kind of quiet, you, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to move on. And so Peter left. And the next morning, sure enough, when the guards woke up and they realized that Peter wasn't there, they, they started searching for him, looking all over the place. And King Herod and the Jewish leaders were so angry. They had all the jail guards put to death. So not a happy ending for them. Happy ending for Peter because he got out of jail. So what does this have to do with like anything? And, it, you know, like with you. And yes, this little girl was mentioned in the Bible, but like, why? And what I want to say to you about all this is that, boys and girls, yes, you are children. Yes, you have to listen to what adults do. Yes, you have to follow what rules are put in place for you. And um, you may think that you don't have a lot of say in things and that you don't, um, you, you aren't able to uh, tell people what to do and where to go and, and whatever. But what I want you to know is that if you have that relationship with God, if you have asked people uh, if you have asked Jesus to be in your heart, you've accepted him as your savior. You have the Holy Spirit living in you and you have God's power in you as well. So if you are doing something that God wants you to do and that God tells you to do, people around you will listen. They might not listen the first time, but if you are persistent and you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are following what God tells you to do, you can make a difference. Just like Rhoda, the little girl in the story. When she went to tell everybody, did they believe her that Peter was at the door at first? No, but she didn't give up. She was like, guys, Peter is really at the door. And they finally listened to her. So if you tell people about Jesus, if you live the way Jesus wants you to, people will listen to you, even though you are a child. So what are you going to do? Are you going to like be quiet and keep Jesus all to yourself? Or are you going to share? Have a good week. Hold on.
Bob. Hey, good morning. How are you? Doing well. I'm joining you versus you joining me yes, today. Right, yeah. Kind of little opposite thing going on. What do you got so, for us today? today we what do we got for the kids? Today? So I, I've got a couple books here. Ooh, I like this. Now, um, I want to use these these um, two books to kind of um, illustrate a verse. Okay. My favorite verse in all the Bible. My favorite verse is Isaiah 40, 31. It says, They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So that verse talks about having a relationship with God. But it says you have to wait upon the Lord. Now, when I was first learning that verse, I looked at the word wait. What does that mean? You just simply sit there and wait for God to do something? Oh, no. No. You prepare. That's right. So I looked it up in the Hebrew language, and the word actually means to bind together. I know where you're going. So, but anyway, but you know, just that idea. Well, what does that mean? Well, when you bind something together, you kind of mix it in the point. So I want to see if I can use these two books. Okay. This, so, this book and your book is bound together by this, that's, that's exactly this backing. Right. right. Shepherd, so I'm I'm bound together. This is me. I take right. it. So that'll represent you. This book will represent God. Okay. So what's your what's your name? Oh, stronger. I was going to say God's stronger than me. So. Oh. <laughs> so what we need to do if if you're going to bind together with God, get close to Him, you have to spend time, time with him. him. So you have to read your Bible. You have to take time to talk. When you read the Bible, God's talking to you. When you pray, you're he, talking to God, and He's so, answering you back. So, let's say, um, so you read the Bible and God speaks to you. Oh, okay, you want me here like this. Yeah. And then you... I'm praying. Spend some time in prayer. Okay. And so you go back through the day. And, and I'm you, listening. As you're listening. As you go through the day, um, you speak a little bit to God. God talks to you. You spend time with Him. He spends time with you. And it goes on throughout the day. How about this? We recognize God in what He does. His creation. Yeah, that's right. You're walking along and you see a beautiful sunrise or something, and you, and you just simply pause and say, thank you, God, for your beautiful sunrise. That's connecting with God. Okay. When you have a, a difficulty that you're facing, and you say, God, I need help, then God's there, his power is there to help you. How about you're telling others about him, when you tell others about him, that's right. And so all oh, those things, I got ahead of God. I got ahead of God. Yeah, we I, I tried to, we, we have tried to do that a lot, yeah. But this is something, you know, it's takes place all through the day. Sometimes it's easy to get in the habit of saying, well, I'll read my Bible first thing when I get up, and then you forget about God during the day. But if you live your life like that, you're not going to be bound together with God. You'll, you know, see him every now and then, but it's not going to really have an impact on your life. And God got the last word in. That's right. He's yes. always right. That's right, yes. And so now we have these two books are bound together. So how tight do you think that bond is? Well, if you look at Scripture, I don't know where it is, but it says nobody can, he's got a hold of you and nobody can yank him out of your John chapter 8, 10, I believe. John 8 or John 10. So nobody can pluck a, you out of God's hand. You want me so to pull that out? I want you to pull. And I'll pull on this. You've got to be kidding me. Let's try that again. I'm not that weak. Oh. Okay, now, now we're both pretty strong guys, and yet that didn't. I mean, it didn't budge It didn't budge. Not no. even a little millimeter. I mean, those pages are tight in there together. So God's got a hold of us. Nobody's yeah. going to. That's right. So when you make a habit of spending time with God throughout the day, every single day, your relationship with him gets stronger and stronger like this. And when problems and difficulties come, they can't pull you away from God. But there is a problem. So can you take yours and just kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit? And uh -huh. I can leave God. Now, yeah, notice he, he didn't. You didn't move. That's right. He didn't move. I moved away from him. But we can get to the point where we stop spending time in the Bible, stop spending time talking with him. We begin to drift away. But then that bond is gone, and now you don't have that strength and that power and that you know God's ability helping you throughout I the day. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yeah. But if you're walking away from God, you're not going to be looking to God for strength. Mm -hmm. So it's important to spend time every single day just communing with God back and forth all throughout the day. It doesn't have to be, you know, 20 minutes at a time. It can be just a few minutes here and there. But when you connect with God on a regular basis, it makes a big difference in your life. Like today, when I came in, it's raining. Yes. And I was talking to a good friend of mine, Richard. He said, 
I told him his corn looked really good. Just we need rain. Yeah. So thank you, God. Yeah, that's right. Thank yep. you for the rain. Thank God for the rain. Wow. You know, I like that. I like that. And I was also reading about how um, we become one with God. Uh -huh. And I brought in a deck of cards. Oh, cool. Now, a lot of people think that cards are evil. Yeah. Playing cards, you know, is not a good thing. And some of, some of the card games people play are not good. Right. But, but in Genesis 50, 20, where Jacob had just been buried by Joseph and right. the brothers, they started looking like, uh oh, we're in trouble. Oh, yeah. And Joseph says, what you meant for evil when you tried to kill me, right. God planned for good. That's right. So it could this could be good. Yeah. And I mean, cards in them themselves are not good or bad. That's what people do with them. Well, people. Do, and the other one that I'm reminded of, we just studied about this not long ago in our study. Uh, you mentioned that we we're going through the I am, yeah. and God said, "I am the gate." Right. Or Jesus said, "I am the gate." Right. And Satan comes to steal and rob, but I come. To give life. Give life. Yeah. So what? Save for, for evil, evil. God makes for good. That's right. So this could be good, oh, yeah. depending on how you look at it. Yeah. And I look at this as two books: one, a Bible, okay, and the other, an almanac. Okay. Okay. So you'll have to explain that. I'll have to explain that yes. to you. First of all, you look at the ace. Yes. And I believe that the ace says there's one God. Right. So I look at the ace as being one one God. Yeah. Ace of spades is the trump card. That's, so that's the card. That's the card, that's right. The two. two. Now, what's two in the Bible? We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament and the New Testament. We're having a little trivia question with <laughs> Tim here. The three. Three. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is a good Bible, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's cool, yeah. Four. Four, Four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There we go. Let's see. What would be next? Five. Five. Now this is a little bit more tricky. tricky. Let me let me explain this one okay. where it is for me. Yeah. You have the ten virgins. Yes. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Were foolish. So that's my five. Six. Took God six days to create the heavens and the earth. That is correct. And then on the seventh day, seventh God rested. day, he rested. Right? Eight. Eight. Here's a little tricky. I'll take you back to the flood. Oh, that's right. Noah's flood. There were eight people that were saved on the ark. Noah. Noah and his wife. His, wife, his three, three sons, sons. And the three wives. Three wives. Eight. Nine. There's a story about ten lepers that Jesus healed, but nine of them did not return to say thank you. There you go. So that reminds me always to thank Jesus for what he does in my life. That's right. The tenth person did. The tenth person so did, but that's also got a dual purpose that ten does as the ten commandments. Oh, commandments yes. There you that's go, right. huh? So we got all that good stuff going. Yeah. The king. The king of hearts. King of hearts, boys and girls. There's only one God. Yeah. God Almighty, and he's a loving God. That's right. Huh? That's for sure. Yes. Where are we going next? So I guess probably the queen is it? The queen. I think that reminds me of the Virgin Mary who yes. gave birth to Christ. Oh, yeah. Without her, I mean, this whole thing wouldn't happen. Right. You could also be speaking of Queen Esther who saved her people from um, being destroyed. I can now go in the Old Testament with this. That's right. And, yeah. And the, the church is called the Bride of Christ, so in a sense the church is a queen as well. So. There you go. Of, so, yeah, so that could be a lot. That could that that could be a lot. Yeah. And then we got oh, the, the Jack. And he is, I put him in his trump because he is the liar and the ruler, he rules this earth. Yeah. The Bible know? says Satan is the prince of power of the the air, the ruler of this this world. Yeah. So that's my Bible part yeah, so of the deck of cards. Yeah. It can also be an almanac. Almanac. Okay. So okay. Because on the deck of cards, there are 365 spots. Oh, wow. 
One for one for every day. Every day. So, so when you're reminded of spots, you one deck is like a full year. Full year. So you read your Bible every day. It reminds me to read my Bible That's every right. day. There's 52 cards. One for every week. One for every week. So if you miss, you know, this week, you've been we've been talking about reading scripture for weeks at a time. That same scripture. So you could each week read a chapter or well, something so you to get memorize one verse a week. There you go. You memorize one verse a week. In a year you got fifty two verses. Fifty two verses. In ten years you got five hundred and twenty verses. There you, I like that yeah. part. See, you're right on board with this omnet. Yeah, right. There are thirteen um, tricks or you know two through ace. Right. There's thirteen of them. So that's the amount of weeks in a quarter. Yeah. Okay. You have um, suits. There's, there's spades, clubs, diamonds, hearts. Four weeks in a month. Four weeks in a month. And you have 12 face cards. 12 months out of the year. 12 months out of the year. So this is not only a deck of cards, but it's a Bible and an almanac. So what Satan might have meant for evil when they developed cards, God can use it. It's good. good. It's a great reminder not only to read the Bible, but to memorize verses. Too. Memorize verses. Now, where I was going with this was, that was just a little rabbit trail we went down. That was, that was nice. Your, like your books, where you bound them together. Right. Okay. Here's another one. You take the deck of cards, yep. you split it, me, Jesus. Right. Shuffle them together. Now, what you do is usually when you shuffle cards, you push them together. Yeah, you're right. You keep pushing them together. Keep pushing them together. And now they're one. Right. And that reminds me of the scripture that you find in Romans 6. It says, it starts out, what shall we say that we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Right. But in verse 5, I've got to read this one because I don't have that one memorized. It says, for if we have been planted together in his in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So we put this card together, this deck of cards, yeah. as us, and people see Jesus in us. Right. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking that you know, when you started that, you had half of the cards represented us and half represented Jesus. You put them together, you can't tell which is which. That's right. So, in reality, now I don't know where this is, if this is in scripture, this is but just, we are the only living representation on earth that people will see Jesus. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what um, Isaiah 40, 31 is talking about, is that when you wait upon the Lord and you're bound together with Him, when people look at you, they see God. They see you, but they also see God. They see you, they see God. They see you as, as one together. And that's what God will use to draw them to Himself. So that, that that's a perfect illustration. You know, I once had in Tacoma had a little little girl ask me, "What does Jesus look like?" And I thought a minute, and I said, "Jesus looks just like you," because that's what we see. Right. Anyway, we're going to get invaded here, so yes, we uh, thought we thank you for letting me join you today. I really I'm glad appreciate you did. it. This, this I is had great. a great time. Yes. Boys and girls, have a good day. Catch you later. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Play and kick ball. Catching tadpoles. Sledding in the snow. Jump and rope and play and hopscotch. Going off to the show. I know that Jesus is with me. Here or there or anywhere that I can be found. I will be good cause I know I should cause Jesus is always around. Hey, how about when we're helping Mom? Oh, yeah. Doing yard work, washing dishes, cleaning up my room. Hey, I know. Making beds and 
Washing windows, sweeping up with a broom. I know that Jesus is with me, here or there or anywhere that I can be found. I will be good cause I know I should cause Jesus is always around. Hey, wait a minute, I got an idea. Huh? I know that Jesus is with me Here or there or anywhere that I can be found I will be good cause I know I should cause Jesus is always around No matter where Jesus is always around And I'm glad too Jesus is always around Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. The Bible says God can do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can think of. Not just exceedingly above, but exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think of. But did you ever notice that God doesn't always do things the way you think he should? Got some paper strips here. Let's see if I can help to illustrate this. Okay, this is just a single strip of paper, about three feet long. And if I take this piece of paper and bring these two ends together and tape them like this, and tape the other side as well. So, okay, so we have a strip that looks like this. Now, if I take my scissors and I cut this in half, going down the length of it, what's going to happen? Well, let's find out. I think you can probably predict. So I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to cut it in half the whole length. What will we wind up getting? Okay. We get two separate loops. Okay. And I'm sure you probably guessed that's what we would get. That was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But that's the way we think things should be done. A lot of times, so God will put a little bit of a, bit of a twist into it. So I've got another one here. So instead of just taping it like this, I'm going to put half of a twist in the piece of paper, like this, and then bring them together and tape them together again. Now this time, it's not quite so obvious. Okay, When I cut it in half this time, what do you think I'm going to get? Well, since this has a bit of a twist on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down here on my stand. I'm going to take a pen and put it on there, and I want to see which is the front side and which is the back side. So I'm just going to draw a line on this. It seems like I should be getting pretty close to the end because like I said I want to get um, see which uh, side is which okay come on there we go keep drawing this is harder than it looks
Okay, so I have not moved the pen off of the paper. And I'm going to keep drawing the line. And see what we wind up with. See how just that one little bit of a twist can cause some problems? Okay, I think we're getting close. Okay. But, um, okay, the line is on both sides of the paper. I only drew on one side. The pen never left the paper, but yet the line covers both sides. So, what do you think will happen if I cut this one in half? Well, let's find out. First one we said, you know, we figured it was going to take two, you get two strips. So, will we get two strips this time? Or what? So, let's give it a cut and see what happens. See, like I said, even that little half of a twist is making this a whole lot harder than the first one. But we're getting there. I'm curious how what's going to happen here. Okay, almost to the end. Okay, so cut it in half. And this time we get not two loops. But we get just one big loop. Interesting. Just one little half twist. And it's one huge loop rather than two small ones. Okay, let's take out one more. Now, we tried just taping it together. We tried it with a half twist. Let's try it with a whole twist. And let's see what happens this time. So there's half and there's a whole twist. Put that down there and okay, go ahead and tape that and tape that. So I'm not going to bother with the pen this time. So the first time we got two different loops. The second time we got one big loop. What do you think we'll get this time? By giving it a full twist instead of just half of a twist. What do you think? Okay, this time, what did we get? We got two links, two loops, but yet the two loops are connected together. Just by adding a little bit of a twist, it came out totally different. God has a way of doing things that are different than what we expect. You expect that God's going to do things one way, but he'll put a little bit of a twist in. But when he does, it's because he knows what's best. And that little twist might make it harder or more difficult, but yet with this one, this one I had a hard time with, but the loop came out huge. It made a big difference. And so as you're going through your life, when God throws those little twists in, instead of getting upset or angry or frustrated, remember that God knows what's best. And his way is always the right way. And when he throws those twists in, then he's got a reason for it. Philippians tells us, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And so as you're going through life and those little twists come in, instead of getting angry or upset or frustrated, talk to God about it. Ask God to help you to follow through what he wants you to do. And you'll be better off if you do that. So here we are at yes. the end of... June. That's right. The end of our Takuma Island Online for today. That's right. And we hope you learned a lot from our story today about yes. Rhoda. Yes, she is a, a pretty amazing little girl. Yes.
And I believe that because she believed God was going to answer prayer, it's like God is the one to let her hear the knocking and let Peter inside. Right. Yeah. So you guys can show up the adults sometimes when you pray. Your yeah. faith. We've seen a lot of great things oh, happen yes. through the prayers of children. Oh, that's for sure. Yes. And so make sure that you guys take your time to pray every day. That's right. Talk to God. Tell him what you need, what you want. And ask him God, for his help, for yeah. his direction, all that kind of stuff. Because yeah. God promises that he will be there. That's right. And we know that you have the faith to trust him for it. Right. So I think we'll leave them with that thought. I think so, yes. Make sure you trust God this week. Yes. So anyway, have a great week. Stay safe, stay well. We'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. Have a great week.